While 2020 has been an absolute shit fuck of a year so far, the silver lining in all this misery is that it's been pretty poppin' for video games. Animal Crossing New Horizons Final Fantasy VII Remake, and now SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated, which has a title that is very much a mouthful. Battle for Bikini Bottom was definitely the one that I was most excited for. The original game on the PS2 is easily one of my favorite games, just ever. And now that it came out, I can finally talk about it. So I will. Although if you're looking for an in-depth review of the game overall, watch my video on the original. This video is mostly going to be talking about the differences between the original and the remake. First off, this is a nearly one-to-one -one recreation of the game. It doesn't add a whole ton of new content. What it does accomplish, however, is being a fantastic looking recreation of the original game, breathing new life into the visuals and animations, as well as fixing some issues with the original. There are a lot of quality of life changes, such as Patrick being able to attack midair, Sandy's lassoing is like really fast now, you could do a short hop as the sponge ball, and other small things to improve the game. All of the buttons, for one, are labeled with an icon showing how you push them. They also added a bubble missile icon to the hatch in the Flying Dutchman's graveyard. The original game gave absolutely no indication that you had to hit the hatch with a missile to get one of the golden spatulas. It expects you to figure that out on your own, and it's really the only thing in the game that left you totally clueless, like, what the fuck? That indication icon will surely be appreciated by new players. Uh, socks are also now easier to see because they have a little bubble around them, so that's cool. They also decided to extend the lifespan of the melons by a significant amount, so those challenges where you need to get a melon from point B to point A, I got that backwards, are now far easier. Oh, and the citizens walking around are great as usual, but there's one that's my favorite and one that I hate with a passion. Not only is this fish a cowboy, but he also has the most powerful strut ever animated. Even with all these robots causing mayhem, he's still walking around like he owns the place. This fish, however, I fucking despise. She keeps winking at me! Ugh! So gross! I don't wanna fuck the fish! Stop Hi. it! Her rock bottom counterpart is even worse because her winking animation stretches the top of her model down and... Ugh! I, I hate the person who thought that a sexy winking fish was a good idea, and I hate everyone who failed to stop them. Also, the game looks amazing! Did I mention that the game looks amazing? Uh, the character models especially. All three playable characters look great. At first, I wasn't really a fan of SpongeBob's in-game model, it looked a little too clean to me? I don't really know how to describe it, but it looks much better while playing and I got used to it. Patrick and his animations are especially great. I adore how squishy he is. Like, look at his stretch and squash. It's amazing. It's kind of hypnotic to watch, even while, like, just playing through a level as him. I just like watching as his fat squishes and bounces. <laughs> The animations are all really good too, almost every character has multiple animations used during dialogue. These animations go hand in hand with the writing and voice acting, really accentuating each conversation. Down here, you big pink lummox! All the characters are just so much more expressive now, it gave me even more reason to sit through each and every bit of dialogue, even though I've seen them all before countless times. They even added props to some of the gags, like when Spongebob mentions his library card being a driver's license, he actually pulls out his library card, and Patrick will actually hold the golden spatula that he challenges you to find in his hand. It makes some of these jokes way better than they were in the original, with the only exception being your conversation with Mrs. Puff and Rock Bottom. I was really looking forward to seeing DON'T ASK QUESTIONS YOU AREN'T PREPARED TO HANDLE THE ANSWER TO in HD and with improved animations, but somehow they made it worse. She just has a very generic animation for it. They even got rid of the zoom! In the original game, the camera zoomed in on her face while she delivered the line, which made it, like, ten times better, and they just completely and totally ruined it in the remake. It's just lost all its punch. All the animations are great, except for SpongeBob's and Sandy's animations when they get a golden spatula. Sandy's ends short, and 
she just kind of freezes in place, and SpongeBob's is kind of stiff. I, I don't know, I don't like him. All of the robots got some new redesigns. Fodder looks more or less the same, but they gave him a little antenna, and it's cute. G Love's little dome is now bigger and transparent with a little siren thing inside it. It makes him look far more like a robot than some weird midget flying saucer with hands. Poor Chuck has a lazy eye. Bombot is adorable. Arf has a poncho now. Hammer looks basically the same. Monsoon looks like he has a black eye, which considering that he has a stereotypical nerd design, it's kind of concerning. Tublet is a heckin' chonker. Bzzzbot has some kind of, like, lever or crank or something on the side of his head. He's also constantly having a seizure, I guess. Arf Dog now has a tail, one big eye, and looks depressed, and I really want to pet him and give him scritches behind the antenna. Tartar now has a normal-looking tartar sauce bottle on his back rather than this weird rectangular one. I've heard some people express a dislike for this design change, but I, I really like it. It makes it look more like these robots were all cobbled together using garbage thrown into the ocean. Sleepy Time has a bunch of great little details, such as the alarm clock looking device that floats above him. The light on it flashes in sync with the lights on its head. He also has a battery on his chest that's on low charge and a plug hanging out. I, I just love all the little details in his design, it's great. Slick looks like he's in pure ecstasy, and I think he may need professional help. Chompbot also looks depressed, and I really want to pet him and give him scratches behind the antenna, and Plankton is small. As for the levels, the overworld is visually way better now. You can actually see each level off in the distance, especially the moon that's flying over the Flying Dutchman's graveyard. It gives off this sickly green glow that you can see all the way over by SpongeBob's house. The moon and the ships in front of it look really foreboding. It's even better when you finally get up close to it. You can see exactly where the sand goes dark and dead. It makes it very obvious that you should steer clear of that entire area. Area. Oh, also, dehydrated SpongeBob looks absolutely horrifying. I wasn't looking forward to seeing this thing in HD, and it was somehow even worse than I imagined. Some areas do arguably look better than others, though. Like, downtown Bikini Bottom doesn't look all that particularly stunning, and I feel that Jellyfish Fields looks kinda generic. There's nothing too special about it besides the cave. The cave is really pretty with all the little lava spouts and the glowing crystals. Goolagoon's cave, on the other hand, looks absolutely gorgeous. The way the light shines through the openings in the cave it looks fucking phenomenal. SpongeBob's dream looks really good. The skybox is this beautiful sunset with clouds and rainbows. It actually looks like a dream world this time around, rather than this strange title card looking void. Squidward's dream also takes place in this dreamy looking sky rather than this music note void. And Mr. Krabs' dream looks far more open and breathable as opposed to all the walls being completely covered in mountains of gold. Patrick's dream, believe it or not, looks more or less the same, but it does have a particle effect that makes it look more mysterious, and there's a light breaking through the sky, shining down on the exit gate. It looks like it could be the entrance to heaven. However, they completely and totally fucked up his dream to the point of it being borderline unplayable. They've committed an unforgivable sin that will make them all burn in hell, even harder than people who eat shrimp. They didn't make the void repeating. In the original game, if you run off far enough in any given direction, you'll eventually end up back where Patrick is. It was an endless void, and in this game, it's just a stupid box. There are invisible walls on all four sides. You people make me sick. And Kelp Forest. Yeah. Surprisingly, Kelp Forest is one of my favorite looking levels in the game. In the original game, Kelp Forest was insanely ugly. All of its colors were just gross greens and it was so fucking dark. Like, why was this level so dark? It looks like shit. But Rehydrated made it much better lit, as well as adding a bunch of glowing yellow and white lights to make it more colorful. I mean, mechanically, the level still sucks. The puzzles are all really repetitive and boring, but it's much easier this time around thanks to the melons taking longer to explode. This puzzle in particular. I fucking despised this puzzle in the original game, and while it still sucks, it's at least not frustrating this time around. The main three bosses easily have the best redesigns. They all look much more like, you know, robots. Especially robot SpongeBob, like, Jesus. Those clear, dead looking eyes and all those teeth. Why does he have so many teeth? Ew, gross! And while his design is absolutely amazingly horrible, uh, the boss battle sucks in the remake. The battle is just 
way too easy this time around. The original game was easy as well, but the final boss provided a decent challenge. They dumbed the fight down so much. Like, in the original, when you jumped off the platforms and onto the ground, Robot Plankton would follow you and constantly shoot at you so you didn't have too much respite. It takes him forever to start shooting at you in this version, so not only do you have plenty of downtime, but you can also damage Robot Spongebob from on the floor while he's not attacking you. You can can get a bunch of really easy, cheap, free hits. This, <laughs> the second battle was made even more ridiculously easy. Robot Plankton moves and reacts way too slow to be any kind of threat, and if you die, you keep the progress that you've made. What made this segment so difficult in the original is that you get no health pickups and no checkpoints. If you die, you need to restart the whole segment. With checkpoints, it's basically not a challenge at all. And don't say that they made it easier because it was too difficult for kids. Me and all my friends were able to beat the original as kids, and we still enjoyed a fair challenge. It did not need to be made easier. So, yeah, that was incredibly disappointing. There were some other changes that I found kinda weird. For some reason they decided to give the cruise missile an overhead camera, which can make it really easy to accidentally fly into walls and stuff, cause I'm so used to it being a first person point of view. The kids that you have to save in Goo Lagoon have also been changed a bit. Like in the original game, once you knock down one of the balloons, they just kinda of fall. Including if they were floating above water. SpongeBob no! <laughs> Those children can't swim! In the remake, once knocked down, they just kind of defy all known laws of physics and float over to a fixed point on the beach. However, one new feature for the game was hyped up before launch. A brand new, never-before-seen co-op multiplayer mode. It's a wave-based beat-em-up sort of mode that you can play with exactly one other person. You only get the basic attack as well as the ground pound. You basically have to go from island to island having to fight through three waves of enemies each, um, and all of the enemies of course being taken directly from the main game. In fact, pretty much all of the hazards are taken directly from the main game. You got those blow-up rings that breathe fire from Goo Lagoon and the pie-throwing cows from Sandy's Dream. This in the entire mode is more or less comprised of stuff they threw together from the actual main game. They didn't bother making anything new or interesting for this. It's incredibly fucking disappointing. The only brand new thing that this mode brings to the table is the Robot Squidward boss fight, which was actually a scrapped boss from the original game. The battle made it into the Game Boy version of the game, but the main game never had it aside from a piece of concept art. So you can bet that they banked on Robot Squidward in a lot of their advertising, only for it to end up as part of a shitty multiplayer mode. God damn you guys are fucking geniuses. They said that they were remaking Robot Squidward and more cut content from the original game, but I guess that more never actually came to fruition. I had this grand idea that there'd be a whole new section of the game with three new levels, a new mini-boss, all ending in the Robot Squidward fight. Maybe they'd finally make Glove World a level, another scrapped concept from the original game, but no. They made Robot Squidward and put him in a really really shitty multiplayer mode. And this mode goes on for way too long. I was expecting something short and fun, but it just kept going and going to the point that me and my friend were basically begging for it to end. The only reason we pushed on was the promise of fighting Robot Squidward. And guess what? I never got to fight him! He's just in the background of each level, throwing projectiles that you gotta dodge. You don't actually fight him, he just fucks off at the end. And from what I can tell, there are no other levels in the multiplayer mode. This is all it is. It sucks. I really wish that they had focused more on expanding the main single-player game rather than this really really awful multiplayer mode. New single player levels would have been really cool, but I guess that a multiplayer mode was much more marketable to new players. Although, I guess it's kinda fitting. Single player games from the 5th and 6th console generations had a habit of forcing in a multiplayer mode that had nothing to do with the main game, usually just being a small handful of minigames. The original Battle for Bikini Bottom didn't have anything like that, but I guess it's a cool callback to that generation of gaming, even if it sucks. Oh, oh, and the theater. Oh. My. God. 
So, in the original game, you can unlock the theater at the end of the game to see a bunch of concept art, and it was really cool! In Rehydrated, it's the same price of 40,000 shiny objects, but instead of a ton of really cool concept art, you get... Okay, are, are you ready for this? Are you sitting down? You get exactly, count them, 10 screenshots. 10 screenshots of shit that you already see while normally playing the game. Why did you make me waste so much time grinding for shiny objects for 10 really shitty in-game screenshots? You could have done literally anything else. You could have had concept art of the robot redesigns, you could have had concept art of the multiplayer mode. Fuck, I'd be happier with the same concept art in the original game. Why even include a theater if this is all you're gonna do with it? It's so incredibly lame. But despite that overall, Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated is a great remake. It takes the original game and breathes so much more life into it with its updated graphics and new animations. It's so much more cartoony and alive, which is probably a good idea for a video game based on a cartoony and live cartoon. It also fixes a lot of issues with the original game that, to be fair, you probably wouldn't notice unless you've played the original game. Now, for the moment of truth. Would I recommend this game over the original? Once they fix all the bugs. This game was busted as shit on launch. The audio had all kinds of problems, sometimes sound effects just wouldn't play, sometimes sound effects would play way too fucking loud. For some reason, the opening and ending cutscenes both had desynced audio, but only the opening and ending cutscenes, all the other ones were fine. You could also make certain voice clips loop on end, like keep running towards and away from SpongeBob's kitchen, or towards and away from the food cart. Patrick will make sure that you know his stance on smoothies. Smoothies! Yummy! Smoothies! The physics can get really stanky, like, for instance, uh, do you like getting stuck? Cause things have a tendency of getting stuck in this game, primarily you. Usually you can wiggle out of these, sometimes having to reload a checkpoint to escape and it isn't game breaking, but it can get pretty annoying. Also, this seesaw is really weird. Wh why is it so hard to jump off of S Stop It? Oh, and I decided to 100% the game cause I love it so much and I wanted to see the special 100% ending cutscene. So I went on my merry way to fight Robot SpongeBob again and I guess he didn't get the memo, cause he never showed up. Same with Robot Patrick and Robot Sandy. I entered the boss battle arenas, and they're completely and totally empty. I just want to fight Robot SpongeBob again, but I can't and I don't know how to fix it. Do note that a lot of these bugs may have been fixed by the time that you're watching this video. These videos take a lot of time to make, so... Uh, I don't know, a lot of my complaints and glitches I mentioned may be fixed at this point. So, yeah. If these bugs are all fixed, most certainly go for Rehydrated over the original. But, uh, yeah, thank you for watching the video. If you liked this and you want to see more, more of my stuff, I make a lot of similar videos, check out my channel, subscribe for future content, leaving a like and or a comment helps boost the video in the algorithms, so that would be greatly appreciated. And if you like my content and you have a uh, spare dollar to throw around, I do have a Patreon in case you uh, can spare even just like a single dollar. That would be insanely appreciated. But yeah, thank you for watching and hopefully I'll be seeing you in the next one.